Today, we're going to do a super simple lesson on how your plants absorb nutrients, mostly out of the soil, but this does lightly apply to how they absorb nutrients out of the water column as well. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and uh, we've brought back the whiteboard. It's been a while, but uh, you'll have to deal with my crude drawing once again. We have our plant, we have our soil line, I only have so many colors, what do you want from me? Then we have our root system, and then we have our aqua soil, dirt, gravel, whatever we're using. But this lesson applies best to soils that can hold nutrients. So things like dirt, aqua soil, uh, whether it's clay or ash based, etc. Those are most prevalent. However, this same lesson does lightly apply to how plants would strip things out of the water column itself. If we're looking at our plant's root system, right? And if we were to get a microscope out and look super, super close, we would see something like this, where these teeny tiny little roots actually have thousands, potentially, of little bitty hairs on them. And those hairs are doing a bulk of the work when it comes to absorbing nutrients. And in this case, we're talking about things like nitrogen, calcium, phosphate, all of our macro and micronutrients. An important thing to understand is that in the end, those are electrolytes. Science-y nerds, don't beat me up too hard. We want to do this really high level and just understand the basics, okay? When we add a bit of fertilizer, right, and that starts moving through the water column, you know, we'll, uh, we're going to put a couple sprays of fertilizer in, or maybe we add powder, or we're gonna, maybe going to add root tabs. Whatever that is, in some way, shape, or form, whether we manually place it down into the substrate or it's liquid, the water will transport all those nutrients down here, right, into our soil. And for the most part, our soils typically have what we refer to as a cation exchange capacity. We're gonna go a little deeper on cation in a second, but basically what that means is their ability to pull ions, which are negatively charged, right? This is an important thing to keep in mind. Science nerds, again, chill out. I know some of them are positive and there's all this extra stuff. Relax. <laughs> we're not doing this at a scientist, it's full scientific level. But anyway, they're gonna pull, and if we were to look here really close under a microscope, we could in theory see some of these things bonded to the soil particles. So it might be hard to see, but basically on each of these like soil particles, we've got a couple little tiny blue dots. Some might contain more of our nutrients than others, but basically they are getting bound into the soil. And in order to make any of these nutrients, whether they're macros or micros, available to our plants, we need water. Well, that's really helpful. We're in an aquarium, so we've got lots of water. But what water does is it makes those nutrients, those electrolytes, and the easiest way to think about these as salts, soluble, right? So similar to if we were to add table salt to water, over time it dissolves into it. And we no longer see the individual grains of salt in the water. The same thing is going to occur with all of our nutrients and any given electrolyte. They become soluble, aka turning into a solution, a mixture of water and other compounds. Since we're completely submerged all the time, this becomes a little easier. But it's not just being a solution that makes these things available because otherwise they would constantly free float around and never end up bound into the soil. Here's where these little hairs over here and that cation exchange thing really do some magic. So for any of our cells, right? If we were to draw a cell, you know, here it is. It's, it's got all its different things. It's got its mitochondria and all that. But the important thing is this outside, right? That is a membrane. For those of us who remember our early kind of biology and science classes when they taught us about cells, the cell wall is a membrane. And what is imper important to note is that all membranes, ba basically put, are what we refer to as selectively permeable. What does that mean? That means that for certain things, they are allowed to pass through that membrane wall, that cellular wall. So think things like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide. These things can pass between the wall, but for certain larger things like calcium, they cannot freely pass 
through the cellular membrane, the cell wall. What has to happen is most commonly a process called active transport. There's other ways that this happens. It's not only active transport, but this is one of the easiest ways to understand the basics, okay? If you want something a bit more in depth, there's lots of stuff on the internet, all right? So how does active transport work? And this is a big part of cation exchange, right? Your plant is going to expend an amount of energy and when it expends that energy, when we get all the way down here to all these teeny tiny roots and throughout this whole root structure here, what that does is it slowly, from an electrochemical perspective, this is a, an electrochemical process, it begins to positively charge the cell walls and other portions of the cell, but just think about the cell walls, that membrane. Now that it is positively charged and not neutral, it is going to be create a chemical imbalance in basically a radius around this portion. It creates a zone, is the easiest way to think about it. And if that zone is like this, where there's a bunch of nutrients available in our soil, what can happen is the negative ions that are a part of all of these different electrolytes, because many of them are negatively charged or can become negatively charged, we won't go too in-depth on that. That's more than we need, right? And when we have a positively charged cell wall or membrane and a negatively charged nutrient, opposites attract, right? So what happens is these little dots of nutrients slowly leave the soil and get closer and closer to all these teeny tiny hairs. And then they, because they have been negatively charged and the membrane is positively charged, active transport starts to take case, and they are able to permeate through the cellular wall despite not normally being able to do so. That extra energy expenditure makes this possible. Once they are in the cell wall, it still takes a little more in energy to slowly get into the vascular portions of the cells, and then all those wonderful nutrients that are in our roots can be transported up into our plant, whether it's nitrogen to help with all the, the different magic things that go on when it comes to beginning photosynthesis, the things that are necessary for regulating things, uh, whether it's iron to build something, calcium to build stuff, carbon, right? All of these things can then transport into the plant and become available. And once they get into the vascular portion, think like our veins and arteries, right? They can move throughout the rest of the plant and not just here, these teeny tiny spaces and these cell membranes and be used by the plant to grow, to flower, to build more root structure, etc. Here's where this gets a little interesting. Part of this process, that process of active transport and that selectively permeable membrane, that cation exchange, right? And all that cation exchange basically means is the cations that are bound to any given particle, right? Uh, molecule, etc., they shift when they're negatively charged, which is usually a hydrogen based reaction. Not always. I know science people calm down. But basically, because you have all this hydrogen and negative charge being created in these zones, what it actually does is it temporarily lowers the pH of the area. This can happen in soil, in water, etc., because lower pH is more permeable. It allows easier facilitation of transport. This is why when we talk about high pH aquariums, we say that plants can struggle. It's not necessarily purely because of the pH. It's because in order to allow this process to occur, the amount of work and charge that has to occur to attract those negative ions through cation exchange requires more energy. And the more energy a plant has to output in order to do this process to absorb its nutrients, the less of those nutrients it can use toward that healthy foliage growth that we all love. You know, these beautiful greens and all these crazy plants behind me, they do much better in soft water than hard water. But it is still possible because science does crazy miraculous things and this can occur. Some plants are better than others. They don't need the water to be quite as soft or to have the pH drop as low to allow the permeation in those membranes to occur. So let's wrap up the basics. When we are adding fertilizer, whether it's liquid, powder, or a root tab, eventually it is going to make its way, whether we directly place it or through the water movement in the system, 
down into the soil. And the soil will help those various nutrients, those electrolytes, bond to itself through the process of cation exchange. And then our plants will use a little bit of their energy to positively charge all of their roots so that the negative ions, the cations, get attracted and move out of the soil through the water into a solution and can be absorbed by all of our roots. And then once they're fully absorbed, not only do we see a dip in pH because of this chemical imbalance within the water that occurs between the negative and positively charged uh, protons and ions, that helps the absorption process so that our plants can do all the cool, amazing things that they do. Now, this is the super short version of this. You can find half hour, 45 minute, hour, and multi-part lectures on this, whether it is from the agricultural departments that are out there, or a number of different uh, scientists and teachers that are on YouTube, right? There's all sorts of ways. So if you want to dig really deep in this, just look up how do plants absorb nutrients. You will find a ton of really cool resources out there if you want to dig a lot deeper into the science behind this. But the important thing for us as fish keepers to understand is that our more active soils, right, that the ones that have higher cation exchange capacity, they help facilitate this process. And that process is far more important for our root feeding plants because they really need their roots to connect into these bits of soil in order to make that process happen. Now, if you go a lot deeper into this, there, it actually involves bacteria and all sorts of a crazy nonsense when it comes to how it occurs in aquariums, but we don't need that level of detail right now. And, and frankly, that's over my head. Leave that to the real scientists. But the other thing is that understanding that because that process, that positive and negative active transport, right, is effectively temporarily in a zone lowering the pH in that area, that helps us understand why for some of us who have very soft water, plants can be a lot easier. And for those of you who have very hard water, that's where some of the difficulties might occur because your plants need to expend more and more energy in order to help that transport process, that cation exchange to occur because the natural pH is higher and the pH needs to drop a certain amount to make this membrane, this permeable, selectively permeable membrane, able to absorb these things that normally it does not allow to transport through the cellular wall. There you go. A little bit of science. Um, this was all prompted from a question that I received, a, a comment question that I received on a video earlier. And uh, I thought it would be a fun topic to explain at a like, very high basic level. Uh, believe me, I'm sure the super science nerds can give us a lot more detail, but I really want to thank you all. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you learned something, let me know in the comments down below. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.